Hello, it's November 3rd, 2022. We're in the IS Knowledge Engineering meeting. It's Daniel and David Ng. We'll see if anything else happens or joins. And before starting, we just discussed a bit about David's work and some of these Creative Commons courses on different aspects of systems. Do you want to add anything about that? Uh, no. Well, so the, the history is that, uh, it actually started in 2010, 2011 at the Alto courses. Um, and so, um, uh, I was at Alto university a lot and teaching those courses and actually with there's, there's also a YouTube channel, uh, associated with all of these and, um, some Vimeo, um, but all the stuff has been in effect captured and available forever. So it started off with the 2011, 2010, 2011 um, teaching at Alta University. The, the original program was um, create a sustainability program. And they created uh, that at the merger of three universities. So it was the business school, the design school, and the engineering school. Um, and um, the create a sustainability, sustainability program had a requirement of two system thinking courses in it. Uh, for uh, to get EU standard and blessing, and and uh, I was at Alta University um, as a student. Uh, I went there originally to teach, and I'm still a PhD student. So they asked if I would take the course. Uh, at that point, it was 80% at IBM. So I wrote the course. I delivered it the first time around, and then uh, IBM wanted me back 100%. And so Gary Metcalf taught the course uh, for a number of years. Um, when I left in 2011, uh, Susu Nosala um, took over. And Susu Nosala, let me find CSRP Institute. Uh, Susu has had this other parallel journey um, where she went from Finland and then she taught at, uh, at Tongji University in China for five years. Um, oops, not that one. Um, CSRP Institute, copy this. Um, and so, um, so Susu took over the creative sustainability courses, um, and, uh, and we've been working on and off together ever since. Um, so, um, the, the history is that teaching the 2010, 2011 gave me a foundation. Um, and, uh, in 2016, um, Susu, uh, was good and, and the old people who had originally designed the program at Alta University, got pushed out. And so um, there's a, the, among the, if you follow through the Alto University link, you'll see that there's actually three courses I taught. And the last one is a 2016 course, which was the um, system thinking two, in effect, if we had, if we had a way of actually structuring it. So that was the, uh, the system thinking two course. And then the University of Toronto course, in effect, would have been the system thinking one course. Uh, so system thinking one, uh, so in, in the whole creative sustainability program, when I taught it, originally they thought that um, there were like five modules and system thinking should be module one and two. Um, Susu came in afterwards and figured out that was a mess um, and in effect resequenced the system thinking courses into number four and number five. Uh, and so she's the one that actually did the mindset course. Um, and there's other courses that, that Susu would be better. You could invite her sometime and then she can tell you all about what happened there. Um, so um, the mindset course was to get people ready for talking about systems thinking without using systems language. Um, you ease them into it. And then by the time, you know, the third, fourth, fifth course come around, it's kind of like, oh, you know, this is what this is the way we actually do it. So you guys have been talking about systems. You've been talking about boundaries. You've been talking about critical. You talk about all these sorts of things. I talk about panarchy, you know, all these things you've been discussing, there's actually real research behind it, but you can't hit them with that on day one. Um, so the the history, again, just backing up, starting to repeat myself, 2010, 2012, I taught it. 2016, I came back and taught system thinking too. Um, then 2018 uh, was actually um, a really weird circumstance um, that the um, one of the associate deans at University of Toronto uh, actually sent me this message in the beginning of December and said, 
if you were if someone offered you a course to do to teach system thinking beginning in January, would you do it? And could you do it? And I said, yes, I could. And what happened was that the professor that normally teaches the courses had a, a head injury. And she he was she was trying to get him to like take off the whole term. Um, and so I got this opportunity to teach at University of Toronto on on short call. Um, so that uh, that's 2018. That's kind of um, the a beginning of a line. Um, I'd spent between 2014 and 2017 working in the pattern language community and around federated wiki. Um, so there is actually. Let me see if I can find it on this one. Uh, maybe not wiki. Yes. So there is, uh, I'll put that down here. Uh, Federated wiki work uh, down here. Let's see if this sticks. Yeah. So this this is some of the work that I started with. Um, so, uh, Robert Best is actually here and he's nearby in Toronto. He's actually in Markham, but he started this work on open learning commons. And so I had encouraged him open, uh, let's see, openlearning.cc. Uh, he's still, uh, let's go to here, discuss openlearning.cc. Uh, Um, so I've been um, using, I've been um, using, uh, having R Robert support me. He's interested more in the technology than he is the content with openlearning.cc. And so the, the gist of the, um, the ISSS Corvallis meeting, the second one that I presented at, was to get people to actually contribute to, to uh, openlearning.cc. There's also, and this is associated with uh, Dig Life, the Digital Life Collective. Let me put that in here. Um, let's start closing windows. The Digital Life Collective. Um, so the Digital Life Collective is uh, incorporated in the UK. Uh, there's a lot of Americans in it, though. Uh, it's a cooperative. Um, and so they believe in open source technologies and promoting them. Uh, it costs 10 US to join. Um, it actually is in the process of being taken over by another group. Um, so they could use some better governance over there. Um, so Robert Best had partnered and done a lot of work with the Digital Life Collective. And um, some of these technologies, like um, I'm not sure whether the Discuss site is still and the uh, Wiki are actually part of the um, their partnership between the um, Open Learning Commons and um, the Digital Life Collective. Um, so that was kind of the infrastructure I'd set up to do all this. Um, and um, I still, I'm using it personally. So the uh, System Changes Learning Circle uh, systemschanges.com. Um, start closing some of these tabs and get too many. The system changes learning circle. Um, since 2019, um, has been using uh, diglife.com. And openlearning.cc. So on the site you're looking at right now, what well, I've the the on on the uh, federated wiki, um, one of the things that uh, that I've done with the with the federated wiki uh, is try to rename some of the things to make it less confusing because um ward has not uh as uh, ward has not spent the amount of time trying to explain it to other people and so as an example um describing a page as a card 
uh, which he's okay with, but he doesn't do that. But, you know, it's like, well, what is this? And it's like, well, it's a card, like a hyper card would it be. And then it's like, well, uh, so you have actually a web page that has multiple cards, as opposed to saying, well, there's a web page that has multiple wiki pages. And it's like, oh, that's confusing. So, so some of this work has been trying to demystify that. But I haven't been working so much on, on uh, federated wiki of late because um, I feel like I should be working on content, not so much on technology. Um, so if this group actually picks up on some of this stuff, then I'd be more than happy to contribute. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I mean, do you think it's more reasonable to I triple S host their own fed wiki, or is there some other way to do this? Well, uh, so you could, but it's kind of like, what's, uh, so there's a speed bump, which, and, and if you've been t talking to Mike Pearson and to Carrie, uh, federated wiki is not the easiest thing to understand. Like it, it's actually the same thing. It's funny in the last week, um, I've been on, I'm on Mastodon mm -hmm. and the, the number of people, <laughs> the number of people that like get frozen when they're trying to get off Twitter, uh, onto Mastodon is just amazing. And it's like, okay, you know, um, a few people have started joining me over on, um, uh, on, on this instance, because the first issue you've gone into with Mastodon is, oh, which issue, which which instance do I go right. on? And so it's that's like, okay, the challenge it was, of federation. That's yeah, what a federation exactly. means. Exactly. So you, that's the same sort of issue you get into on Federated Wiki. Uh, and so Ward, um, being a kind soul, very open and sharing, um, will host people. Um, but then, you know, the question is, well, you know, should you have your own wiki? And it's like, well, you should get to the point at which you could actually do that uh, if you're technology savvy, which most people aren't. Um, so um, this is why I, I actually was relying more on Robert Best with openlearning.cc. Um, Cause Robert is, he works a lot with Ward. Like he's on every, what's the Sunday pioneers call. Um, and so, so he's keeping that fire burning. And I, I, Mark Pearson actually, he makes comments that I'm not involved all the time and I keep dipping in and out. And he says that I'm waiting until the technology is ready. And I say, yeah, it's because Mark is actually actively working on the technology with the technologist. And it's like, I just want to use it. So the, the sort of thing that happened with, with Federated Wiki, if you can go all the way back onto GitHub was, um, I need to be able to have, um, bubble and line charts which is actually pretty standard, right? You want to be able to navigate and click on stuff. And and um, then, you know, many years later, they actually started working on it. Yeah, so. I totally hear you. Like as a Linux user and all and so on, and also committed to open source, it's like, it's like, yeah, here's why you should use GIMP instead of Photoshop, or here's yeah. why you should use OpenOffice or LibreOffice instead of Microsoft Word. It's just like it does, but some there's so I so I say it seems like IS should host, but at the very least, I'm interested to continue learning about it. I'm going to leave these tabs up and learn more. We yeah. already had it as kind of like actionable in the on the more education side. Mm -hmm. But also it touches on, of course, the knowledge engineering side, just yeah. making sure that it is um, functional in all facets. And there's going to be plural solutions and platforms. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to be fragmented infinitely and have like some people contributing like below critical mass on multiple distraction platforms. But at the same time, there's no singular platform. So I think so having FedWiki in that portfolio is very important. Yeah, I'm I'm not convinced that ISSS should have its own wiki instance, which is why I have Robert on openlearning.cc um uh, because all, it, it's sort of like um Robert is actually willing to help support wiki and like he'll teach people how to use wiki. Um and so I put this uh uh so open learning up at Robert Best. Thank you. His name here. Um yeah. And so, um, yeah. So, like, if you if you if you go over Federated Wiki, you'll see him him over there. Um, but also, when when Open Learning um, 
common started, there was also a board and um, and the people have fallen off that board. So there's no guidance there. And so, OK, so we, we're kind of um, the open open learning commons. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oops. Yes. Yeah. Open Federation learning. in the extreme is dissolution. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, uh, it, it's just that uh, there's there's an intersection between um, technology and knowledge, and um, lo and the people that are I'll, like I, what, admittedly, I started the ISSS in 1998, right? So this is this is a long time ago. This is actually before the rise of the internet, really per se. Um, so um, people who are not kind of the net generation um you talk to them about stuff like creative commons and writing on wiki it's not a natural thing for them which ages or sectors do you believe are most receptive to thinking that way uh unfortunately i'm not sure that it's gotten any better in terms of age because now we have the issue um but susu was teaching a class in uh, in china and she said the students came to class and none of them had laptops. They're all on mobile devices because in Chinese, it's easier just to, you know, work on the, on the screen. Um, so that was like a, a heralding thing for me, which is that people now assume like ultimate usability and they're used to having all these tools available. And then you look at something like Federated Wiki and it's like, well, Federated Wiki works on a phone, but you know, they've not, that was not the way they originally intended it. And it's not means they can't rebuild it that way, but they're not so focused on the UI. They're more focused on the back end. It's kind of like, that's where a discussion where someone's just trying to write content is like, uh, it's too much. So, wow. uh, yeah. so, so for, so from an age perspective, I'm not sure that being younger helps. There's, there's actually, I hate to say like people between the age of 50 and 65 <laughs> kind of grew up when they, you had all the technologies, like, you know, so we, we had personal computers, we had internet and now we have phone. Um, and so those type of people can be more comfortable um with sectors though um there you're kind of in ed tech that i think that's that's kind of the issue so one of the people that um i i i i have to bring them in later um there's, there's people that work in ed tech and so um uh I, I follow them but that's an uphill battle too um yeah yeah Wow, well, thanks so much for sharing all of this um, context. To kind of turn to our regularly scheduled events, there's two aspects of what we'll try to at least cover in the remaining 20 minutes. The first is to prepare for a 40 minute session during the Saturday symposium session, which is at 7 a.m. Pacific. That's my time zone. Um, in terms of just what approach to bring, what to say and show. And then we can look at some of the ongoing smaller modular areas of development in knowledge engineering, but just sort of to give a broad overview for someone who might be looking through the coda on their own time. This top shelf Knowledge engineering is about the project and documentation and meetings. So you can always catch up with meetings, including finding recordings where they exist, adding your feedback before the meeting, et cetera, in this top section. And then there's a communication section at the bottom. In the main knowledge engineering work, which you can totally reorganize if you see it a more intuitive way, there's a general topics that refer to different threads of knowledge engineering that we want to be building out incrementally and collaboratively. So different initiatives that people are developing or just different areas where we want to be building lists and tables and structuring information and providing resources. And then outside of the topics are some more project scale pages related to like different modular outcomes that someone could be pursuing somehow as they see it, uh, different approaches that might come into play for those outcomes to be realized, different 
strategic discussion not well formed as of November 2022, other than to provide some initial scaffolding during 22 and hopefully in the Saturday session or otherwise connect with a few of those who have periodic insight to provide as the people who join the live meetings always do and a few people who want to coordinate a little more actively on some particular outcome in the knowledge education and we can talk about which ones are most salient when we return to the agenda and then lastly just like general questions which is analogous to a similar page in um, education just more general questions about knowledge engineering from systems perspective um, one of the main tasks right now is uh, gaining a better understanding and characterizing the current IS resources that are in different states and locations and formats and so on. So Peter has created uh, uh, initial uh, tree mapping with different resources. Especially yearbooks are our probable first priority. Um, I think that was something that we talked about in education um, previously. Seeing, um, I guess, the 32nd, um, the 1989 Odom edited yearbook as being a good representative text in terms of reference detection and scoping out um, like, for example, different working products and groups of IS, and just generally thinking of this as just representative of the challenge of you know, pre-DOI, digital scholarship, um, resource linking, and um, to that end in the um, in this area, well, if if and when Peter's here, we can talk more about this. But uh, I've just been exploring, like, what metadata do we want to be capturing, and what systems and others in knowledge engineering. I I do hope we'll see better connections with different specific uh, database implementation technologies, of which is not my expertise, but to help provide that specification or make it clearer for someone who has that kind of database uh, knowledge. I'm trying to develop what type of metadata and associations are relevant and to understand what kinds of database structures are the, um, the best practices for these type of modern knowledge engineering tasks. But we have not done any like database migration or anything at all. It's just right now about determining the locations of the resources and like saving a full copy if we can, and then developing a schema and just, but I know developing the schema and ontology for databases is obviously non-trivial especially to include like different file formats and so on. Um, so if someone sees like that opportunity, I think that is going to be very substantial process in knowledge engineering, even just to understand and maintain what we currently have, which is probably more fragmented and less available and in indexable and discoverable than it could be in IS and in systems more generally. So how to uh, address that situation of fragmentation from just a file storage perspective to a um, discoverability and a keyword and also including different languages and different types of resources and so on without just 
the general everything by everything. So there's like a few parallel approaches. Obviously, the database engineering, according to other large engineering uh, knowledge engineering settings, but then also us coming to terms with what systems resources we have at the IEEES and can then want to have what visibility into those resources. And then verging more towards education is like what paths on those resources and commentaries are pedagogical, useful, and how to facilitate in educational settings, uh, improvability, like improve the reliance and effectiveness of whether ISS hosted or just linked and curated knowledge resources. So somebody who wants to do feedback loops for this setting or wants to dig into the scholarship of what should be available, like the open proceedings of certain events to enable that kind of education through knowledge engineering. Do you have any comments or like thoughts on that? Um, I just, I, I guess I have a question about um, the structuring that you're looking at because uh, um, so I, in effect, I've been relying on, on um, internet search and just trying to get across because um, just thinking about internet people. So again, for people that aren't familiar with technology, internet is it's supposed to be like you have your own network and then you go enter between them. Right. And so the reason that I, I myself have so many different identities and places um, is because um, the structures change. And so um, like, uh, the um i blog because a blog reflects what i know at a point in time um and what i learned from ward cunningham is that blogs in effect should change faster than wiki because wiki is when you actually have stuff figured out and then then you would actually um you know just progress it slowly as opposed to making big jumps um but even that is uh, so so I, I think from, from IBM research, we had the idea of pre categorization and post categorization. Uh, so databases typically are pre categorization, which is you decide what the fields are going to be um, and then you fill them in uh, like a relational database and post categorization is tagging. Uh, because you don't know what all the terms are going to be like, you know, 10 years from now, you know, what's what's the term that will bring them in. And so from that perspective, I've moved a lot towards post categorization that will figure out how stuff gets organized afterwards. Now, I don't know how that fits with the way you're thinking about yep. knowledge engineering. Yes, very interesting. Thank you. Actually, in CODA, RJ Corday, my primary colleague, our CODA is card based we emulated the index card based knowledge management systems that have been in use since the index cards <laughs> and post-it mm -hmm. notes were around mm -hmm. and so i totally agree like um it's not a rate limiting step the, the metadata these are solved problems but i just want to get thinking about the descriptors but the real um tags field is where the associative work comes into play and um recently i i could find it another time but recently rj has um characterized uh a um assertion based tag system mm. described as a certain kind of information environment which we believe describes what some of these systems are and that um, has helped connect it to some other ways of thinking about epistemic environments and so uh, as tags are flexible and I believe that the FedWiki and other um, composable knowledge management structures have the ability for you to be shaping and, and adding and deleting your schema continually as should be the case, as we do in Coda. Um, in that case, those systems have the functionality to work. Then there are technical questions, social questions, behavioral, legal, that's like the bolts, business, operational, legal, technical, social. So um, yeah, 
it's very valuable, I think, for this role to hear experiences of those who are working across different platforms and like towards these aims. And I guess how can the IFSS or any project that we work on do this? What should we focus on? Five minute videos? Static documentation, update the wiki page to, you know, siphon people that I, I, I personally do not know as not even having an instance, but that's just where my thought goes. Uh, let's see. Um, Okay, just to let's see. I'm just gonna look at oh it's uh Marcel. Um I was just looking up the editor. There's an editor at um Wikipedia. Uh oh geez. Okay, I'll drop this. Um, editor at Wikipedia. Okay, Marcel has been a strong supporter of the sisters community. This goes back to like 2001. He's been he's been a strong supporter. Um, so you actually have someone in Wikipedia that cares. Now he's a volunteer, just like the rest of everybody else. But um, uh, this is the work that he's been doing, uh, and so he's one, he's one of the founda foundational people that looks into system scientists. How do you think that could come into play? Um, when we talk about Wikipedia and the content of Wikipedia. Um, he has, has been in effect the curator of of the whole um systems content let me see if i actually says right here uh that this is that's probably the wrong page to be looking at him with there's a, but yeah like yeah. his edit file or something yeah 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 uh um, let's see oh user mdd here we go uh oh you know i recognize these that's very funny yeah yeah huge leverage point and trim tab work to make open access systems representations and edits yeah, this one's a better link. Okay, I found him. Yeah. Awesome. I'll check more about this later. The golden era of systems visual design. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, in our final minutes, I guess just to close and kind of summarize the low preparation approach I am taking to Saturday and Although neither of us seem to be in frequent attendance, just we can both try to see if this is going to be an effective approach. Um, there's going to be 40 minutes for this, and I plan for it to be interactive. I plan to say hello, introduce myself as a new role, and just give one thought to set the scene conceptually, which is about education and knowledge engineering 
as being about curating our cognitive development in education and preparing such for others, and then knowledge engineering as modifications of our basically informational niche and different opportunities and challenges associated with both and the necessity of having both for a healthy systems science ecosystem. Uh, then just opening it up to thoughts or questions that people have and just close there by just saying it's possible to be involved and to come help and learn more. To be concrete about it, um, coming to the CODA is actually helpful in explaining CODA. Um, so I, I've been around technologies like this. And so, but a lot of people are not familiar with it. Um, and so using this as a platform for um, collecting, uh, sharing, these sorts of things is actually maybe new to some of the people. And it would be an interesting question to ask um, if people were going to contribute, how would they contribute? You know, like, are they actually going to contribute directly on Coda? Mm -hmm. Are they going to attend meetings? Um, you know, so yeah, uh, yeah. There's this short answer. There, yeah, short answer. Everyone's always welcome to join a meeting, even if they're on their phone. They don't have to contribute one keystroke, yeah. because their input is always valuable, even if they don't want to talk or if they want to talk. It's just these are times for people to join, so everyone should join. Then, depending on one's familiarity and preference, they should take ownership of one small or large part of the coda. Who wants to? If somebody wants to have their own thoughts and doodles page, and that's all that they want to do and not worry about any other coda features, then that's fine. Yeah. But if somebody else wants to be more interested in actually characterizing an area, then they should do that. Yeah. This, this in IBM sales we used to call the ask. What are you asking? And the ask comes at an individual level. And so you may have to create categories for people to fall into, which is people that, um, yeah. that you know, proficient with the technology and could get in and do stuff. And people that are, uh, even, uh, if, even if they're reviewers, um, that, that's a, a, like, you know, and Wikipedia, like you can join and fix spelling mistakes and that's a contribution. Great. Okay. Well, thank you for joining. That will okay. close it for today. I'll stop the recording now. Okay.